One more night, one more night I could fight it through Till the darkness turns to light One more night, one more night Say it's gonna be okay see we've been getting a lot of snow winter is definitely not done yet over this past week we've had a few different storms and i think all together we've had about a foot of snow luckily it has been melting pretty fast it seems to come about four inches at a time and then it'll melt and then snow again and it has really put a hold on the projects we've wanted to get done luckily we did get the chicken coop finished our next project was going to be our greenhouse that we were hoping to get started this weekend, but it looks like we're gonna have to wait a little longer till some of this snow melts. So we did have some coupons to Lowe's, so we ended up going there yesterday and picking up everything we needed for our greenhouse or our hoop house that we're gonna be building. So let me show you what we got and what we're gonna be building out of it. So this is some of the stuff, I'm not gonna uncover it all the way because we have concrete under there that I don't want getting wet, but we're building a 12 by 36 hoop house and we're gonna be building it out of chain link fence top rail and two by fours and concrete. And then we also have our greenhouse plastic and our tube bender in the shed. So like I said, we're pretty much set on getting to building. The only thing we're waiting on is some of this snow to melt because we do need to level the ground where it's gonna go. And we also need to pound these posts a couple feet into the ground. So this bad weather isn't all bad. We're gonna use it to our advantage and we're gonna get some much needed downtime before our projects really begin. And we're also going to take the dogs out up the road on the ATV trail, see how far we can get on it because they've been cooped up in the house just as long as we have. All right, so we pretty much made it as far as we're willing to go with the flares. The snow's still pretty deep up here, but we are, are gonna continue on foot. Okay, so we got the dogs exercise. Now we gotta see if we can get the Polaris turn around and out of here. Okay, snow's kind of deep off the trail, but 
use the winch real quick and pull this out. So we ran out of water this morning, so I am uh, hooking up the generator to the well and then running some water into the house in our holding tank. And we have a 55 gallon holding tank inside. And usually it's been lasting us probably, I don't know, five, five days probably with showers and, you know, dishes and everything like that that we use the water for. But lately we have all of our transplants inside and we have the chicks inside. So with all that and the normal doing dishes and showering, we have been going through our holding tank inside like every two days. So um, we're having to come out here a lot more and fill it up, which is not that big of an issue because we are grateful that we have a well and have enough water to do that. So I'm gonna fill her up. Luckily our well also produces good drinking water. So I'm gonna take care of our drinking water for us today. We have two of these seven gallon totes that we use and these things are pretty awesome. They're super tough. We had one fall off the top of our six foot ladder full of water and didn't crack or anything like that. So I'm gonna get our drinking water filled up for us. All right, and that's it. That's how we fill up our water in the house and get our drinking water. Only takes probably about, I don't know, less than 10 minutes to do the whole thing, so it ain't too bad. Okay, so now that we're back inside, we are working on dinner, and I figured I would show you guys an update on the chicks. So we've had the chicks for a little over a week, and they were originally upstairs with us. They have made it down here, which is wonderful, because we were struggling with having the chicks right upstairs next to our bed. So we were working on creeping down that temperature. They are now okay with 60 to 65 at night, and that's about what we're keeping them at during the day, maybe a little bit higher just because we do have the fire running. So we're predicting that they're gonna be ready to go out by the end of this week and be outside with a heat lamp. We went ahead and separated the chicks into three brooders, mainly because they are crazily active and it's probably too many chicks and too small of an area. So they're gonna be reunited when we get them out there, but this is working out way better for food and making sure they all get water. So I don't know if you remember, these birds when we first got them, they were all blonde and you can see the different wing patterns on them, which is really fun to watch them as they grow up, get all those different colors. It has been wonderful having them down here, but we are still really anxious to get that hoop house built because we have plants everywhere. We have a bunch of plants on this table and I do have to actually alternate out which ones get light. I put them up here because I do have too many as you can see. And a lot of things are outgrowing the space so I did transplant some herbs and you can tell those are also occupying quite a bit of the house. So this is a beautiful tomato plant which is probably too big for this container, but there's really nothing I can do about it right now since it's not time to plant them in the greenhouse. So even though this plant looks beautiful, in all honesty, we have had, I personally have taken it pretty hard, had some major struggles with gardening this year inside this house. The plants weren't and probably still aren't getting enough light. I mean, we're up to like 15 and a half hours of daylight, so we're good now, but it really wasn't good enough when the plants were first starting. I've also been struggling with keeping consistent temperatures. We had lower temperatures in our house and we cranked it right back up for when the chicks came. I put some plants outside probably prematurely and that didn't end well. 
And worst of all, I actually committed a huge crime. I overwatered and was overwatering for quite some time. Didn't realize that I didn't poke big enough holes on these and lost over half of our pepper plants, which is really sad. But that's okay because some of them did make it. Again, it's probably not enough. I'm probably gonna end up buying transplants and it was a really good learning experience. But I just wanna tell you guys that's what happened. So if you're noticing that I don't have those plants in the experiment, that is why those did not make it through my overwatering. So there was a few things that I am gonna be short on. I'm gonna be short on a few herbs. I did pick up a few herbs from a store. They had some really nice looking ones. Rosemaries were one of the few plants that I killed many of. So this year again has just been a major struggle because we are used to a greenhouse or direct sowing and obviously the growing season is a lot shorter here. But that's why I planted extra, although it is still disheartening to see these plants die after raising them for months. So everything is, I think everything's good now. That's enough about the plants. We are starving. Let's make dinner now. So tonight we are making a bean dip with sourdough bread. And we have been soaking our beans for half of the day. And we're gonna go ahead and cook them now. While the beans are cooking, we are going to get some of the other ingredients ready. I need to thinly slice an onion and we are gonna add a few cloves of garlic as well as some Cuban oregano. Our beans are done now. I'm going to get this sourdough in the oven. I'm gonna add a little olive oil and our onions and the garlic. I am adding the beans and the bean broth into this mixture. We're gonna let that cook for about five minutes and then we are going to immerse and blend it into a dip. Okay, we're gonna eat. We'll catch you guys next time.